Welcome to Power Up, the uptime podcast focused on the new hot off the press technology that can change the world. Follow along with me, Alan Hall, and Itosaur's Phil Totaro as we discuss the weird, the wild, and the game-changing ideas that will charge your energy future. Phil, our first idea is a leading-edge protection system from Siemens Gamesa, and this leading-edge protection is a little bit different than things we have normally seen. It includes basically a cavity So it's like a a shell sort of device that would go on the leading edge, but it has a cavity with a shock absorbing medium inside of it. So to take the blows of the raindrops or the bugs or the hail, so it absorbs that energy and then the, the wind turbine lives a long time. That's a interesting concept. I haven't seen it implemented yet though. I, I think because this patent application is also recent, it's probably something they're still testing. They've got a blade tip with a, a double layer with an elastomeric, uh, or, I mean, I guess they've described it in the patent as it could be anything, uh, you know, kind of squishy, let's call it, uh, polymeric material, any kind of, you know, uh, squishy type material. <laughs> um, but what their, what their theory is behind this is that because the leading edge, you know, the, the particularly around the tip, you, your tip speed is so high on a wind turbine blade that when you impact a raindrop or you impact a bug, obviously it makes little dents and you hit enough, especially if you've got like a swarm of bugs or flies or something, it can actually act like you're, you're sandblasting the leading edge of the blade. And, you know, everybody in the industry has probably seen, you know, leading edge erosion and and knows what it is. But the idea behind this is to say, all right, behind, you know, the the blade leading edge and the gel coat, there's this cavity with this, you know, elastomeric damper kind of in there that would theoretically absorb some of that impact and also provide a, um, you know, so it, it provides a rebound. Uh, on the tip to to allow it to maintain the aerodynamic profile. The elastomeric material can be shaped to conform to the cavity so that it'll, it will maintain its aerodynamic profile on the leading edge, regardless of the amount of, of tip damage. So there's, there's a potential performance and certainly noise benefit to it. Um, but I mean, Joel, I'm, I guess I'm curious about this. You know, there, there's other concepts out there, one from Polytech included that seems kind of similar to this. Is this going to be a thing? Um, what I'm looking at this material is, is like, I see it. The concept makes sense. Everything is great. We have been installing shells on turbines because that's what the installation of this will look like. It'll look like a shell. We've been installing shells for a long time. You have Armor Edge, Polytech, like those things, those solutions are out there. But the reason I'm looking at this one with a little bit of a side eye is if this thing starts to fail, if that front edge opens up and then you have this shock absorbing elastomeric compound all of a sudden exposed and this thing starts to open itself up because that's what will happen if it starts to open up, then you're going to have an AEP loss and possible noise issues and all kinds of weird stuff going on up there that you don't want. So I think that some of the, and I don't know what the, you know, chemical makeup of this thing is or the, how they're going to design it. But in my mind, some of the existing solutions that are on the market today may have a better lifespan once they start to degrade than something like this. The key to this patent is the goo you put inside of it. And my suggestion is to use that Stretch Armstrong toy goo. You ever had one of those, Joel? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That thing was indestructible whatever that goo was we need to be putting that on the leading edge our second idea comes from our friends at utopus insights and it is a system for monitoring wind turbines using vibration data and this is a little unique phil in that it's a sort of a data-driven approach to health monitoring and they're measuring vibration on a number of turbines and trying to group those vibrations into two sets, one that's sort of healthy, normal operations, and another set that's unhealthy, and then use that data to provide forecasting on the health of the turbines. This does make sense. I thought I have seen this in other other farms already. 
Uh, is this idea unique? Well, it's it's there is a unique aspect to this, and I also want to preface this by explaining to people. So, Utopus Insights is now kind of the the data analytics and asset management platform. Uh, component of Vestas Wind Systems, uh, for those who aren't familiar. What they're doing with clustering the turbines is kind of fascinating because what they're actually trying to accomplish is what a lot of people in the industry want, which is, tell me which of my turbines operating in a wind farm might need to be taken down or could be taken offline at the same time to have maintenance scheduled. And so if you can monitor several turbines in the wind farm that are seeing largely the same kind of loading, largely the same kind of damage accumulation. And the clustering of these turbines together in, you know, this data analytics platform can help you determine, okay, well, there's six turbines that are coming up to, you know, uh, a time frame in about three months where we might have uh, a high probability of a catastrophic failure we're going to take those turbines, you know, offline at a point in time in between now and when, you know, our analytics platform says that's going to happen to be able to address that those issues, you know, whether it's just a, a lubrication change in the gearbox, whether it might be, you know, uh, gear damage, whether it's something to do with the blades, uh, whatever the issues are, they can monitor these turbines in a way that lets them do uh, predictive maintenance scheduling that is a helpful component to be able to minimize the AEP loss of taking turbines offline. This technology is actually in use right now on the VX Plus platform for Utopus Insights. So, you know, please get in touch with uh, Vestas and Utopus if you want to learn more um, or talk to us because we've cataloged, you know, something like 65,000 patents and we can tell you who's using what. Our fun patent of the week is entitled Bird Diaper. Now, this this is an actual patent that is for your pet bird. And if you have a pet bird in the house or in an enclosed space, you can imagine what the mess is. And this this patent is really interesting because, Phil, there it's like a leotard for your bird, but I'm not sure how you're supposed to hold the bird to put the the diaper on this thing because it's got wing holes and obviously tail hole and a head hole. There's a lot of holes here. Alan, in addition to all that, it's also got a connector for a leash. So just in case you want to be able to, you know, walk or, you know, tether your bird and keep it, keep it on its leash. This thing does it all. My sister-in-law has a green cheek parakeet. And when you go to her house, you may end up with a little uh, mess on your shirt, on your shoulder. So this thing, I might search this out and try to purchase one of these. Because I believe it could be a good Christmas gift for my sister-in-law and her family for their green cheek parakeet. You know, you, you see a patent like this and your immediate thought is, well, that's great if you have a pet bird at home. But, you know, unless we're going to outfit every bird on Earth with this, it's not really going to solve our wider problem. Phil, do they make this in large sizes for like Big Bird? Alan, I don't know the answer to that, but probably. <laughs>